I learned relative ethics from my <laughs> one-handed rally driver, uh, driver's ed instructor. I may be convinced that I'm the best driver that I know and that I had the best childhood ever. And some people may, may think that that's a point of pride, but I just think that it's a, a way to enjoy life. Uh, I enjoyed my childhood immensely, and I would rather say that it's the best one ever than the worst one ever. But I genuinely think that I had the best driver's ed ever. And it wasn't because I was the greatest driver on the planet at that time, because I definitely wasn't. I did not have the privilege of having rich parents and being able to go karting at three years old with a you know sponsored race trailer and all sorts of things like that. So I had to get my jollies and driving from taking my beat uh, salvage title Ford Taurus SHO with old tires out on the back roads of Maine and understeering like crazy through corners and thinking that I was racing. But I took a great interest in driving from my youngest years and could not wait to get my permit. And we had to wait until we were 15 to go through driver's ed. So I signed up and was ready to go. And I went to what was called, I think it was Western Maine Driving Academy. And at the time I was in a camera club as well. And I found out about this driving club because the president of the camera club and his wife were full-time driving instructors, part-time photographers. And the wife was actually a rally photographer as well. She would go on rallies with people and, and sit in the back seat and do photographs. And I think she also did some navigating as well. So they said, hey, you should sign up for the school we do. And then, you know, we can take you out driving and it'll be lots of fun. So I did. I get to driver's ed and find out that the owner and instructor for driver's ed was a professional rally driver. I'm like, this is awesome. Now, he wasn't the guy like, you know, it wasn't a Colin McRae that races in real rallies that you see in TV. It was, you know, Canadian rallies and ice rallies and things like that. He may not have been famous, but uh, in a little small town in Maine, I didn't care. The guy raced rallies. To make it even more interesting, he was a one-handed rally driver. That's not to say that he did the gangsta lean and drove a rally car like that, but he actually had a, like a club hand. And it was a little bit distracting during driver's ed because she's up there teaching the class and he like, you know, he just always had something in his hand to hold on to. It didn't seem to hamper his rally driving skills, but I can imagine that he wasn't very good at rock, paper, scissors. So class was awesome. And uh, I guess it goes just about as every other driver's ed class goes where they teach you all the laws and, you know, you take a test and all that. But I think it really didn't because we're in Maine. So they teach us other things. So for example, uh, one of the classes, we all went out and they taught us how to change a spare tire. And they made all the girls do it and everything like that, which is great because every girl from Maine should know how to change a tire. Which is funny because fast forward about 10 years and I'm helping out with youth group. And it's interesting how we sort of elevate certain people to statuses of manliness based on their you know hard part haircut or their facial hair or something like that and i think that there are certain minimum qualifications that should be allowed for somebody to you know be uh, you know carry a man card and one of those things is at, at the very least checking the oil and being able to change a flat tire one night after youth group one of the girls had a flat tire and I had no idea this was going on, but I go out and there's all these guys huddled around her car, most of which were viewed and respected as the manliest of the man because they're good at sports and, you know, all that. Rolled up their jeans and all, all the things that, that define manliness in, a, in an urban environment. And uh, none of them could figure out how to change a spare tire. One of them was trying to jack the car up. And so we got the, the scissor jack out and he was literally trying to turn it with his hands on the eye bolt. And I was like, no, there, there's a tool for that, that that gives you leverage. So I got the car off the ground all the way, and then they proceeded to take the tire off. They had figured that out. 
but then they put the spare tire on and they couldn't figure out why the lug nuts weren't going on and it was because they had put the spare tire on backwards. These are guys doing this, adult men who have children and own houses. So I'm like, all right, flip it over, tighten it down. Here's how you torque it, drop it down. Spare tire was flat. I'm like, no problem. I drove a Porsche tonight. Most Porsches come with a factory air compressor. So pretty sure this one has it. Went in the front trunk, sure enough it did. Plugged it in, pumped up the tire, and she was good to go. So I felt incredibly manly that night, not because I knew how to change a spare tire, but because all these other guys didn't. It may seem cliche that a woman in Maine knows how to change a spare tire. Um, that's only one of the things they taught us at, at Driver's Ed. And they did actually teach us some other things that people would assume that would occur at Driver's Ed in Maine. And they actually did teach us uh, how not to get charged by moose when you're on the highway. And uh, that's a very valuable skill that most tourists don't know. And you definitely don't honk at them. But they didn't teach us uh, some other things that you might think that you'd learn at Driver's Ed in Maine, such as you know how to jump your truck uh, in a gravel pit, how to affix uh, your rifle rack, um, how to open the, the door for your cousin on a date, how to shave your wife's beard, how to properly wear your flannel shirt while you're driving, things like that. They, they might have taught us how to program L.L. Bean into our navigation system, but they didn't have navigation in Maine until 2018, uh, shortly after they got the internet. Anyway, what, one of the cool things that I learned at Driver's Ed was that this guy was not a rote teacher. He was a real driver, and so he taught us actual principles. And one of the questions he asked at one point was, what is the speed limit? And of course, people tepid raised their hands and were like, uh, 25, uh, whatever's posted. That guy thought he was really smart. But the guy said, no, the speed limit is whatever is safe to drive given the conditions. And that may be more or less than the posted speed limit. So that probably impacted me more than anything else and is likely responsible for all of my cannonball shenanigans because I took that to justify that driving at 120 miles an hour in a properly prepared car with a co-driver such as Arnie is safe and therefore that is my speed limit. So I learned relative ethics from my <laughs> one-handed rally driver, uh, driver's ed instructor. So I passed with flying colors. I of course got 100 on the test because in my pride being so interested in driving, I could not not get every question right. During the uh, driving instruction, I got my uh, permit during the winter is really cool because I wanted to drive in the snow. I wanted to learn to drive in the winter. So because I was friends with my driver's ed teachers, they knew that if there was ever a snowstorm, call me up, let's go get ours. So that was a lot of fun and uh, got to drive kind of on primo time and they weren't all about driving exactly the speed limit. So I got to have a little bit more fun probably than, than the average person. Now I of course took my license test in my sister's pickup truck. Wouldn't expect any less being from Maine. I had heard that there was two uh, examiners. One of them was a man who was incredibly strict and no matter how well you did, he would always fail you the first time because he just thought that nobody should get their license on the first time. And then there was another lady that was as overweight as he was uptight. So I wanted to, I didn't end up doing this, but I wanted to uh, stop at Dunkin' Donuts beforehand and just happen to have the donuts in the, uh, in the seat when she got in and offer her some. Yes, I've been working on bribing and shrewd negotiations since I was a young lad. My mom didn't go for that plan, but... Anyway, I passed that fairly easily. Thankfully for my parallel parking test, she had me pull up to an identical pickup truck with nobody in the space behind. So it was pretty easy and I nailed it. Um, contrary to the other examiner who was reported to get out with a measuring tape and actually measure the distance from the curb to your car. So that went well, I got my license. It was like the best day of my life. And uh, I went back to school after I got my license and walked in and thought I was awesome because I was the first person in my total of six people in my class to get my license. 
Now, this, this was not a novel experience for me. I was certainly no stranger to being at the top of my class because I had previously been homeschooled for eight years. Now, after I got my license, the shenanigans continued, which was awesome. Um, I ended up signing up for a local rally, not an actual race rally, but a, a time, speed, distance, uh, point to point event. And I took my SHO and I took my previous driving instructors who were, you know, experienced rally navigators uh, along with me. And again, a precursor to Cannonball, I had a solution to not get pulled over. We put the big driver's ed magnetic triangle on the top of my SHO for the rally. So we're driving around on the rally with Western Maine Driving <laughs> Academy and we're speeding around all the back roads in Maine. And it was a lot of fun. Ended up getting third place probably out of about eight people. We had the, the closing ceremonies at Pizza Hut where I received a, a third place trophy. And while it was my first trophy, it was uh, not to be my last. I received at least two more trophies over the course of my driving career. We'd like to thank Avalon King for their continued support of the VinWiki YouTube channel. I have their Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating on all my cars and I love it. The increased shine, the reflectivity, the ease of cleaning, and the protection of the paint all make it a tremendous thing to add value and protection to your car. You can check it out at the link in the description below and we're going to continue to experiment and do interesting projects like the S55 which hopefully at some point soon will get to be shot off the cliff to see if it protects your car in the event of an accident. Oh, well, that's cute, Ed. I'm over here at Genus Garage with Avalon King building a V12 supercar from scratch. <laughs> yeah, we're way past ceramic coatings now, buddy. Okay, well, we'll hear more from Casey about the King Zero project later this month. But again, thank you to Avalon King for supporting the channel. Check them out in the link in the description below.